this is where it all ends. The final mystery in the light and darkness saw- Okay. That was a joke, but what isn't a joke is that this area is real. And to the underground circle that knows of its existence, this is the Galaxy Pools. But before we get into what the Galaxy Pools is, we need to rewind and figure out how we got here in the first place. Let's rewind the clock back to 2019. A player by the name of Froggy61815725, a well-known player in the Out of Bounds community, made it his mission to be able to get back to one of his favorite areas, the Shard of the Traveler. Hidden within the Dark Forest, this was the area from the Red War campaign where you regained your light powers. Froggy was also part of a bigger group, known as the Escape Artists, a group of elite out-of-bounds explorers that now had their sights set on trying to reach the Dark Forest. Froggy also uploaded a YouTube video, issuing a challenge to anybody who could help him reach the Shard. Hello, Froggy here. And, uh, I am issuing something of a challenge here. So there have been a couple of places that I've been trying to explore, and I managed to get a little bit farther into one today. The Dark Forest. And some of the replies noted that reaching the Shard was not only difficult, it was deemed impossible. After weeks of trying, searching every nook and cranny they could find, the escape artists came up empty-handed, and things went dormant. Exploring the depths of content that will never see the light of day is extremely hard work. It makes me super hungry. So surely there will be an answer under this rock. Would you look at that? It's a factor meal box. Gee willikers, it's a good thing I found this box because it will fill an appetite as big as the Leviathan. Choose how many meals you want, choose your meals, and a box like this comes straight to your door. Pop them in the good old Mikey for two minutes and you're ready to eat. Since I'm usually streaming for degenerate hours, Factor is usually my go-to because it's very convenient. Another reason I love Factor is if you want meals that are keto oriented, they got you covered. If you want meals that are calorie smart, they got you covered. And if you're a gym bro and you want meals that are more protein orientated, they got you covered. These meals rotate every single week, so you're not getting bored of eating the same thing week after week. If you're at all interested in checking out Factor Meals, head on over to Factor75.com and use code SWETSICLE50 for 50% off your first Factor Box. The following year, Bungie released the Beyond Light expansion. And with it, they removed the first three years worth of content, which included the Red War campaign. Was it even still possible to reach the Shard anymore? Or let alone the Dark Forest? Was it removed with the Beyond Light changes? Even after claiming they got rid of the Red War campaign, this area still existed. But unfortunately, they still had no way to get in. A couple weeks passed, then a surprising Discord call that was about to blow everything wide open. During one of the Escape Artist's normal Discord call hangouts, a player by the name of AZ1 appeared and dropped into the Discord call. AZ1 had saw what the escape artists were trying to reach and just so happened to have some funny lines of code in their PC to fly over and check and see if it was actually accessible. I've been advised by my legal team to let you guys know that I do not condone cheating in the popular online video game Destiny 2. Thank you, Dave. AZ1 not only confirmed their suspicions on the existence of the load zones they were looking for, by loading in through patrol, there was confirmation of another load zone off in the distance that had been speculated to exist from the Red War, Quarantine Sector 236. Weirdly enough, this wasn't the same Quarantine Sector 236 from the original Red War mission. This one was missing the interior building structures and was pretty bare bones. But aside from finding all that, AZ-1 actually managed to stumble upon Destiny 2's most well-kept secret. This is the Galaxy Pools. Thanks to AZ-1, the escape artists knew there was a lot more at stake, and they decided to double down on their efforts. Could this area actually be reached without cheating? In order for a player to reach the lift and hit the correct load zone to be able to bring them into the galaxy pools, there were a couple roadblocks that needed to be hurdled. The escape artists needed to find a way to correctly navigate through the dark forest, which is actually split into three parts. Normally, the connections between these zones are riddled with death barriers. They needed to find a way through. About a month later, things started heating up. They had finally reached the second part of the Dark Forest. All thanks to Henry, 
Through a lot of brute forcing, Henry had stumbled across a tunnel that connected the first and the second zone without hitting a death barrier. After this discovery, everything started to fall into place. A few hours later, Henry had yet again found the next tunnel bridge between zones two and three. Now that the escape artists had reached all three areas of the dark forest, they needed a way to bridge them to the galaxy pool's lift load zone. They would soon find out that there was one more huge obstacle that stood in the way. Normally in Destiny load zones, there are a set of boundaries that try to keep players within what the game considers playable space. These boundaries are called the box. Similar to a boxing ring, if you try to run against the boundaries, it will push you back in bounds. The only way to get through these boundaries is to utilize an ability with pushing capabilities stronger than the boundaries, like a shoulder charge or an eager edge sword. While these options are great for counteracting a push barrier, it's usually not enough to get all the way through. This was the last piece of the puzzle blocking the escape artist from achieving glory. They needed to find a way to break the box, blocking them from reaching the load zone to the galaxy pools lift. In mid-April of 2021, they did just that. With a group effort from Eternity, JB3, Gerbsnail, Froggy, Mad, and Corolla, they were not only able to break the box, but they discovered the second most broken piece of tech in Destiny history. This is the Dropbox method. You'll want to dismount your sparrow so that it will fall off the edge and give you the ride sparrow prompt. You then look at the upside down sparrow to hold the prompt and make sure you have direct line of sight to get onto your dropped sparrow. The Dropbox took advantage of a slip up in Bungie's game programming. By lining up two sparrows, players would be able to transfer the ride sparrow prompt from one sparrow to another essentially allowing them to teleport from one sparrow to the other by simply holding Ride Sparrow. For this, we are going to label two sparrows. Sparrow A being your fire team member's sparrow that needs to be flipped upside down. Sparrow B being your sparrow that you want to throw off the edge and will pass through the box barrier since vehicles are not treated the same as players and will be able to pass through the box barrier no problem. For some reason, if you walk next to Sparrow A while it is upside down, you will see the Ride Sparrow prompt which is unusual. If this was your Sparrow, you would normally see a Flip Sparrow prompt. So by holding Ride Sparrow on Sparrow A, while Sparrow B is falling off the map and has passed through the box barrier, you will be teleported to your Sparrow, allowing you to break the box. The Dropbox method was groundbreaking. This meant that the ability to break the box on the way to the galaxy pools was possible, but this didn't make executing it any easier. There were a couple of theorized spots that they had found to potentially get out of the box in the Dark Forest, but the biggest issue with the drop box point is it's actually in an area where you're not allowed to spawn your Sparrow. That meant for each attempt, they would have to perfectly infinite Sparrow fly all the way from the sludge through tight corridors to the drop box point. Not to mention having to make sure that one of the Sparrows lands upside down for the drop box method to work. While this did work, any issues further along the way after breaking the box would mean a complete reset and doing the initial setup again. Discouraged but adamant, they searched for a midway point. They decided to head over and explore the other potential candidate for box breaking, Quarantine Sector 236. All right. About a month earlier, there was actually another piece of tech that Froggy, Corolla, and Gerbsnail had found called an Interdimensional Res Breach, or IRB. IRB allowed them to trick the game into placing a player's ghost somewhere where it doesn't belong. And with some wiggling and brute forcing, they could use that to pop through the floor. This would be the trick to actually finally being able to get into Sector 236. After finally reaching it, this zone gave them an unexpected surprise that would actually change everything. Quarantine Sector 236 allowed players to spawn sparrows in the load zone. Getting here wasn't any easier than the other setup, but this meant no more hours of tedious flying and setup just for one attempt. All they needed to do was find a good candidate spot to break the box. Funny enough, this area actually held one more secret that doesn't exist anywhere else in Destiny. This area has breakable trees. Using a charged melee, they just crumble. With this insane discovery, they were on the brink of glory. After a very successful day, they decided to have one of their friends hold the checkpoint so that they could get some well-deserved rest. This was it. Matt had broken the box and began to infinite sparrow fly towards the load zone. With both Froggy and Corolla helping guide him from afar, 
Mad exited his sparrow and began to fly around, looking for the lift to pull him. He hit the lift. Then he used his Titan Stasis melee to counteract the lift trying to pull him up, dropping far enough down to finally hit the unnamed load zone. I hit the load. I hit the fucking load. I hit the load. I hit the load. After years of hard work, it had finally happened. Someone had actually reached the galaxy pools without no clipping. Oh my god! Oh, we're done! It's happening. Yeah. We are here! Like, Dude, oh my god, we're at the pools! Oh we're god. at the fucking it's pools! The pool. no, your fire team is closed. Go. We're not here to celebrate one person. This was the hard work of many brilliant individuals, and their efforts and brilliance deserve to be celebrated. This is how the escape artists found Bungie's most well-kept secret. So, what are the galaxy pools? Well, we don't exactly know. In the lift on the way to the galaxy pools, you can actually see some hexagonal shards similar to those in the corridors of time scattered across the field. Could have something to do with that, or maybe not. We really don't know. All we know is that the galaxy pools has actually existed in Destiny 2 since the game launched, and have yet to see it used. Maybe it really is where it all ends. Funny thing is, is that Bungie must have taken notice of the escape artist's findings some months later, as the Dropbox method was actually patched. The escape artist shrugged it off as if it was nothing, and actually published another method to be able to get there shortly after, called Syncbox. As of this video's publication, Syncbox is still working, so if you'd like to use it to get to the Galaxy Plus for yourself, I'll leave a link to a tutorial down in the description below. Warning, it is not an easy thing to get there. I was actually given a chance to ride there myself. I was thrown in the backpack and very quickly realized how complex and difficult it actually is to reach the galaxy pools. It really put into perspective how crazy it is that something this big can exist and so little players actually know of its existence and how long it's been around. Finally, I have to give a huge thank you to all these wonderful people in the Out of Bounds community, especially Froggy with helping me put this video together. Thank you for watching.